we should really start with a round of applause. Please welcome Garbage. <laughs> I think, was it 83 you set up the studio? The, the band we were in, Duke and me, were in, and Steve was our roadie and sound guy, Spooner. We wanted to have a place to record our own music. And um, we had started an indie label called Boat Records purely just to release our own singles and EPs and things and started releasing a few other bands in the Madison, Wisconsin music scene. Those punk bands we started off with got really well known, some of them. Yeah. And, and, and the scene grew, turned into this grunge thing. Um, yeah. And our studio was Pretty one central. of the places where yeah. you, you went to do that. And uh, um, Butch started producing some really big bands. Yeah. But, and at that point, though, this is, I suppose this is an interesting thing. At that point, you decided to form Garbage after those 10 years. Yeah, we were doing all these remixes for bands like U2 and Nine Inch Nails and Depeche Mode and people like that. And um, kind of got the, the bug to do our own stuff based around that idea of, of stripping everything down to rhythm tracks yeah. and, and weird synth sounds and heavy guitars and... and make our own thing out of that. Steve saw Shirley one night on MTV at 2 a.m. Yeah. And uh, we, we all fell in love with her voice and tracked her down, and here we are. How do you write the lyrics? I mean, do you sit and get a pen and paper and listen to something over and over and, and try and grab words out the air, or do you...? No, I just make it up. I just, w I just, just try comes and out ch of you. channel it. But, when, you know, again, this is something I've been doing now since, you know, for 20 years. Mm. When I started out, I mean, he and, he and I on the first record, it was laughable. We'd literally be like, what rhymes with wide? <laughs> Sh you know, hide by, I mean, that, I'm, not, I'm not a word of a lie. That's how we wrote that first record for the most part. It did but okay though. Way, <laughs> yeah. And, and then I started keeping notes and then I'd yeah. start writing lyrics. And now I just try and go in front of the mic and just let it, trust myself because I actually did an amazing writing session with um, Rivers Como from Weezer a long, long time ago. And I was having real trouble coming up with something. And he said, you are the most opinionated, mouthy bitch I've ever met. <laughs> and you're sitting here with me and you, you can't find something to say. He said, it's just a conversation. It's just, you, you know, just think of it that way. And the, once he said that to me, the penny dropped so hard for me. Right. It was unbelievable. And I've never had a problem coming up with words since. Technology, especially in the game that you guys are involved in and, and sampling and looping and stuff, has dramatically changed since in, this, in the span of this 20 years of your career. So how does that work now? I mean, is it nice to be DIY again, if you like? Technology has empowered uh, us as well as a whole new generation of, of bands because if you're smart you, you can make records very inexpensively and make them sound really good and if you are are if you are authentic and can write something that is fresh and sticks out it will get heard you know it, it's I mean there's a millions and millions of bands out there now because yeah. it's easy to do so you really do have to come up with something truly unique I, I feel I think we all do in order for it to be heard so, uh, you've been my idol since I was a child literally um, but you said about being in a female fronted band and how that's been a bit hard. Can you tell us more about how you felt as a female in the music industry back then in the 90s and now and if it's changed and how it's changed? You know, to be honest, my gender hasn't really played a large part in my thinking, if the truth be told. I mean, I'm aware I'm a female, I'm aware that I'm a different sex from the rest of the band, but it has never been a, I've never seen it as an obstacle, really. Um, I think when we came out in the 90s, like there was a lot of female fronted art, you know, bands and a lot of like feisty women, you know, and uh, although there, that remains the case on the underground still today, I feel like right now, you know, in mainstream culture, uh, the, the voice of the female sort of antagonist is not necessarily a favored one right now. But I think it's a little worrisome right now that we're not hearing from from the women who are not the sort of cheerleading beauties. You know, uh, we're only hearing from one subset because that was our response to the 90s where all the women had attitude, every single one of us, you know, whether it was Missy Elliott, whether it was Courtney Love, whether it was me, whoever, you know, there was a, such a broad swathe. And so it's a great time for anyone who is female right now, who's got any kind of intellect to, to rise up and be heard. I really believe that. So good luck. How many of you are musicians? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you want to be engineers or producers? Same things in some instances. How many are, are interested in going into management or publishing? Um, don't always put all your eggs in one basket. 
I'm lucky that I've been able to do a lot of different things in my career, but that's just one word of advice is to, is to know there's a lot of information out there and try to absorb as much of it as you can from all the different areas of the music biz. Learn about the business, protect yourself. Don't let anybody tell you how things are. You know yourself. Brilliant. Well, on that note, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. Can we say thanks to Garbage? I thought it was brilliant, like I'm in a band myself and um, it was great, I was just talking about, thinking about the female fronted bands, kind of having a bit of a comeback, that was really interesting to hear, it was interesting seeing the process that they did to make it, like and we can hopefully take some stuff out of that and use it for what we do. I like, just really lucky that at BIM we can have like artists like this come in, like that are actually doing it, like it's, it's great. They always really, really inspire me, so yeah, I want to get back into the studio now after listening to that, it's really interesting. Interesting.